I'm pleased to be joined by Sue Pabiel, Head of OD at One Housing Group. Hello, Sue. Welcome. Hi, Kim. Now, recently um, you blogged about an interesting topic um, as part of your Thinking About Learning blog. It was um, tackling or challenging the topic of diversity in learning and development. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that. What brought you to um, explore that topic? Yeah, so it's something which uh, I've been aware of and uh, kind of attuned to for a number of years, actually. So I first wrote about it when I went to conf uh, several conferences back in 2013. And then recent um, conference attendance has kind of highlighted the issue back to me, uh, which is primarily that what you tend to see in the conference format, in the speaker form, uh, uh, with speakers on stage, is that they mostly tend to be white, male, middle-aged men um, who, are, who are talking about whatever it is they're talking about within the L&D field. If there are women, they uh, tend to also be white, and they also tend to be middle-aged as well. Um, and there tends not to be as much diversity, um, obviously, that you can see within that group, in the speakers that you can see that are there. And I think that's something we need to be more aware of and considerate of. Um, and I don't think that organisers are paying as much attention to it as they could do, and maybe as they should do as well. Okay, so how do you think, why do you think this has come about? Is it tradition? Is it just history? Um, it, how can we improve it? So I don't think it's a, anything that's anything specific to L&D at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I read a lot about how many other um, attendees at conferences um, observe the same. Mm. Uh, and it's across industries, across um, um, sectors and all this kind of... Uh, uh, so it's not something which is specific to just one, to us in L&D. Um, who knows why it's happened, right? It, you know, there, there, there's many kind of good and great thinkers out there that can tell us um, as to why these things come around and what happens. Um, I think it's more useful to start considering uh, how do we make that better then? Mm -hmm. yeah, if, if we can recognise that it's a thing, and it is, um, so how do we improve on that so that it starts to feel less exclusive and it starts to feel more inclusive? So you're saying perhaps um, events and conferences, not just in learning and development, but more broadly, are not uh, representing the workplace as effectively as well as you would like? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a really fair way to say it. Um, you know, and it's not even just in the speaker attend uh, speakers who, who are there, often it's in the delegates as well where um, there's been a number of times I've been at a session where I'm the only person of colour obviously there. And not that I'm ever fa made to feel in any kind of way you know, pointed at, like, there's clearly somebody there who's from an ethnic minority. Does, you know, no one is ever that kind of brazen to do anything like that. But it's certainly something which everyone will be aware of at a level. But it shouldn't be something that we're of at a level because there should be a representation there of everyone within the either workplace, society, however you want to start to broaden what that looks like and what we feel like. So how can we tackle this? How can we improve um, the, the balance or the diversity? Um, how can we encourage more um, L&D practitioners um, from, the, from the workplace to have a voice or to attend conferences and to become more involved? It's a really tough one. Um, I sought out some opinions from some of my uh, people in my personal learning network and they gave me some really valuable insights, um, and um, I'm going to shout out to some of them. So there's Barbara Thompson, Doug Shaw, Julie Dreiber, um, and they gave me some really valuable input where they started to help me think about that. It's not just that uh, people need the voice, it's that people need to be encouraged that they can have a voice. So I think social media allows that to happen these days, right? It allows for you to be able to have that voice out there. But I think what's missing from that is that's not enough, actually. It's we need to find an, a way to actively include people or seek out voices that we just may not ordinarily think about hearing. We hear from voices within the in industry from a good range of people, very good thinkers, and I have a lot of respect for everybody that's out there. What I just tend not to see so much of is opinions from people who represent anything along the spectrum of what we would call as diversity, right? So from people of colour, um, different sexual orientation, um, age, um, race, cultures, whole range of kind of opinions and um, where, points of view out there about what life means for them in the world, tend not to hear that so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is almost a bit like a shout out in a way. 
Yeah. And you'd like to raise more awareness about these, this, this area, this, this topic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is a shout out. I, um, I really would. It, it, I, I think a lot of people would. It, it, you, you gain things by reading things and hearing about what's out there in the world and what can be done and you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's not just that. I think it's also about organisers taking this more seriously. Yeah, there's, no, there's a number of conferences where I've seen the lineup for them and you just look at it and go, right, so there's everyone who's white that could want to attend. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. Where's everyone else that could be represented but just aren't? Mm -hmm. why, why aren't they sought out? Why aren't they present? And if they're not there, what are those organisers doing to either support them or find ways to actively include them as part of that makeup? So what's next for you, Souk? Um, how are you going to follow up your blog post, for example, um, on, on this topic, or are you going to explore this any further? I, I think it's one that's just going to keep coming around time and time again. There's no easy answer to this. Um, you know, there's no silver bullet that's going to fix it tomorrow. It's going to be something that, um, look, if you, if you think back to you know, the um, Equality Act and how that came about, the Women's Equality Act and fair pay and all this kind of stuff, we're still trying to get that right, and that happened like 40, 50 years ago. We're still not at, at pay parity there. So getting you know, diversity across the, across the industry is going to take generations, actually, to get through because it's just one of those things that does take time. It takes a lot of people to have to be aware of it, to have to be attuned to it, to have to be brave enough to stand up and go, I noticed it, I don't like it, there's something not right there, you need to do something about it. And that can be done in ways which are helpful and useful, and it can also be done in ways which, are, uh, which cause anger and ire as well. Um, and so it, it is going to be a tough one. There, there's no easy way to get through this. Well, I imagine this will spark a lot of conversation, uh, perhaps on Twitter. Um, so it would be really great to um, see more of that. Well, thank you very much, Suk. Nice to meet you. Thank you.